Hey everybody, we have a great special show for you today. This is Terry and Angel Greer, and we are going to interview them about their transformation journey. So welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank, Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. We're so happy you're here. This is only our second interview ever, so we're excited about that whole process. We're so honored. Yeah, absolutely. Very honored. Thank you so yes. much. Well, your story, you know, when we, we read it, you know, someone sent it to us. or uh, Terry. Oh, Terry sent it to us. Your story was just so fantastic, and we just fell in love with it, and we said, okay, people have to know these people. We have to show them, tell them their story so they know how, how easy this is. Because you guys really, you know, your story, it just made it so easy. Okay, so we'll jump into our first question. So can you tell each of us or tell us your background story leading up to your whole food plant-based journey? Like the before. Oh, and, and your age. Just oh, everybody your asks us yeah. so your age now. Sure. <laughs> if that's okay, your age, yeah. If you want to your age. <laughs> okay, so I'm 53. Yeah, are you, do you want, oh, I'm 49, so I'm much younger. <laughs> <laughs> she always reminds me she's much younger than I am. <laughs> but you can tell your story first. Okay, all right. So uh, my journey has really been a 20-year journey, quite honestly, to becoming whole food plant-based. Um, 20 years ago, I can recall when Angel saw a little mole on my arm, and she said, honey, I think you might want to get that checked out. So I went to the doctor to get it checked out, and lo and behold, my blood pressure, my top number was over 200. My bottom number was well over 100. So I was basically walking around with hypertension and high blood pressure, unbeknownst to me. Just 12 years earlier, I was in college. I was all Ohio, track and field, you know, Mr. Mr. Jock. Uh, at that point, I still worked out five, six days a week, running, exercising. I had no idea that my blood pressure had, was just basically out of control. So at that point, the doctor put me on not only one blood pressure medication, but two, two blood pressure medications just to control my blood pressure. And I, I remember calling, when I remember calling Angel on the way home, and I said, honey, the doctor told me that I'm going to most likely be on blood pressure medication for the rest of my life. It was hereditary, and there's really nothing you can do about it. And for me, growing up as an athlete and someone who was very competitive in sports and really have remained very active in sports, um, that, that, that really, really, um, really hit home hard. And so, um, you know, growing up, I mean, I grew up in, in a family that culturally ate a lot of fatty foods, a lot of dairy, um, you know, a, a lot of foods that, that just weren't, weren't healthy, um, but it was the best that, you know, the family knew and, and my family growing up, it was the best that they, they, they knew to provide. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, making us meals and, and things of that nature. Didn't really eat a lot of fresh fruit or a lot of um, fresh vegetables. It was usually out of the can um, and some, some fruit, but again, nothing uh, that was controlled in terms of, you know, low sodium or low, um, you know, saturated fat or fat or anything that's, 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 that's label specific and things that you really should be watching and looking for. So unfortunately, over the years, my blood pressure had not only increased, but also, had started to develop a lot of plaque and, and cholesterol buildup, you know, within my, you know, within my arteries and so on and so forth. So that really resonated really a couple of years ago when I went to the doctor and had a, um, a cardiac scan of my heart done. So at that point, I was still on my blood pressure, two blood pressure medications, and we did a cardiac scan and it had showed that plaque had started to build up in, in various parts of my, um, of my heart. And so the doctor suggested that I was put on a, a statin, a cholesterol medication. Um, and I can remember Angel was in the office with me and she was in tears. I was in the 90th percentile of people my age with that condition. And that's not, that's not the percentile that you want to be in, obviously. That would be the race you wanted to win. Uh, that def definitely wasn't the race I wanted to win. So um, you that, that hurt. You were exercising this entire time. So from Oh, yes. Exercise the entire food. time, six days a week, um, cardio four days, since I've been 14, absolutely, cardio four days a week, lifting weights two days a week, um, and to your point, Jeffrey, yeah, I mean, that, that didn't do anything to not only reverse or help with my blood pressure, but also, um, you know, cholesterol buildup, and unfortunately, the doctor put me on a statin, because again, that was the only 
thing that was going to help me at that point. The doctors told me that I really couldn't control. They knew how much I exercised. They knew how much I worked out. They said, you really can't control. You can't control, you know, this disease with, with that type of workout regimen. We need to put you on a medication. And at that point, um, I remember going to the gym like a week later. I just started on my cholesterol medication. And I was in the gym and I was working out. I was on the treadmill. Angel was next to me. And, and something just, just uh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't get up to the level of intensity that I would normally get up to. It was kind of like something was pulling me back. And I was just so exhausted halfway through my workout. And I remember Angel looking over to me and asking me, are you okay? I said, I said no, I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. So I got off the treadmill, I rested. And I didn't go back onto the treadmill, but I knew right then and there, the only thing that was different is that I had started taking uh, my cholesterol medication on top of my two blood pressure medications. And I remember the doctor telling me, you may feel a little different and when I asked him, what did you mean by that? He goes, well, you, you'll see, you just may lose a little edge in terms of um, your competitiveness or your working out and agility and things of that nature. And he was right. He was right. So unfortunately, um, that was kind of the start of, of Angel's mission to really come up with a way for me to try to control not only my high blood pressure, but at this point now high cholesterol. And you, you got to remember, we up until you know, over a 20 year journey, we had tried all different types of, of, of food plans and eating plans and diets. And so um, Angel, when she came to me with this whole food plant-based concept and way of eating, I'm saying to myself, well, wait a minute. We were, we, were, we were just on this planet, said just the direct opposite of what we had. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. But which one is right? So I started questioning her. Yes. Uh, which one he was right? definitely put me through a dissertation. <laughs> <laughs> Can you can you list the ones that you tried? Do you remember the, the various things? Yeah, gosh, yeah. I mean, the Mediterranean diet. I had them on the Mediterranean diet. I had them on the keto diet. I didn't realize when I put them on the keto diet that I was trying to kill them. That was not my <laughs> yeah, that is that is the worst diet for anybody with a heart type condition because it just sludges everything up. It started to raise his blood sugar, mm -hmm. believe it or not. It started to raise his blood sugar. Exactly. And um, so we did that. We ate food out of a box. Like that was, <laughs> you know, that was me, not you. Right. But anything, counting points, anything that we could do. And Terry was down to eating grilled chicken salad because I used to give him a hard time all the time. I'd say, Terry, what are you going to have a grilled chicken salad? And he'd say, yeah. I said, wow, that blows my mind. You eat something different. Exactly. So he was just eating grilled chicken salad, fish and vegetables and eggs, mm -hmm. eggs and some cheese and dairy, right. low fat yogurts, all this stuff. All the stuff that was really hurting me. And I really didn't realize that, you know, how much it was really hurting me and, and, and really was doing me a disservice. And I can remember Angel saying, look, you know, we're going to go on this whole food plant-based way of eating. And she started explaining to me. And again, I questioned, wait a minute, this is kind of directly the opposite of what we, we've been doing. She goes, I know, but I've researched it and this is what we're going to do. And I said, okay. I said, but the only thing I'm going to do is I still want to eat my fish. I still want to eat my, <laughs> still want to eat my um, you said uh, you would shrimp eat and scallops. And, scallops. <laughs> and like, okay, okay, well, I want you to watch this documentary. I'm like, okay. So the documentary was called Game Changers. Oh, yeah. I can remember it was a Sunday morning. I can remember Sunday morning. We were watching Game Changers. And that changed the game for me. That was it. Once I saw Game Changers, I seen all these athletes right who were just coming just, from the athlete's point of view right absolutely yeah. absolutely just you know peaking their performance and just eating you know whole food plant-based you know the former strongest man in the world who was whole food plant-based there, there were boxers and runners and athletes i was like man, this is it so i started to dive in and started to research a little more about whole food plant-based way of living and i gotta tell you it's been remarkable in terms of the results just from one year to the next uh, my overall total cholesterol was 248 um, uh, a year ago, and now it's down to 141. My, wow. yeah, 141, just a year. Fantastic. My LDL was uh, 160. And that's come down to uh, 60, you know, 71 in just a year. Oh, that's. And off of my blood pressure medication, I'm down to just one and the lowest dosage of the one. And I came off my cholesterol medication in just four weeks. Yeah. I had only yeah. taken my cholesterol medication. Wow. I needed to take it for four weeks. And I was totally off. He was on it for six months total. Yep. And during that time, 
I was searching and searching and searching because what Carrie didn't tell you is the cardiologist said to go on the cholesterol medicine, mm -hmm. you're in the 90th percentile and you're going to have a massive cardiac event. So a stroke or a heart attack or whatever those horrible things were. So that's why I was crying in the doctor's office. And so I still wasn't convinced. And I was like, we can find a vitamin. I know we can. Yeah, I'll change eating. You know, go talk to our dietitian. We went, we did everything. We went and talked to their dietitian. She put them on the American Heart Association diet plan. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> they said they would give Terry three months. And in three months, he worked out harder. He lifted more, even more than, I mean, I was exhausted watching him and eating very little portions, being hungry, tired, trying to work through this medication. And then we went back, they took his, and they said, you have to, you have to go on it. And I said, well, isn't there another doctor we can see? So then we saw a lipid doctor. That's right. Because I was insisting, I, I didn't just let him go on that. Well, good, I'm like, good for my you. husband, that's, you're talking. That's good that you just, yeah. you didn't just accept it. No, right. no way. And then changing diets, talking to dietitians. What am I doing wrong? And they were still talking about eating the healthy fats. You know, and Terry, don't eat 15 eggs a week, eat seven. Right. You know, because they're good. And, and that type of stuff. And a lot of fish and white meat chicken. Right. White meat chicken's where it's at. Really so um, after we saw that lipid doctor, he was just about Terry's age, same age. And I said, well, what would you do? Because I was pushing back on this lipid doctor. And I said, what would you do if this was your wife? And he's like, I have my wife on the same medicine. That's what I would do. Wow. That's what you said, yeah. So then Terry looked, and Terry was looking at me for um, yeah, advice, advice and, and guidance and um, yeah. just, just trying to find, because I was literally basically trying to outrun a major cardiac event. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was right, right on my tail, and it, it was starting to gain. Um, and had I have you not found this whole food plant based way of living, I don't know what would happen. Right. Yeah. I agree that you were right. trying to outrun it. I mean, we've all seen the movie Forrest Gump. He has nothing <laughs> on Terry. Yeah. Well, they can go. Well, that's that's the thing. I mean, most athletes that that I know or books that I've read, you know, they're like, oh, I can eat whatever I want because I work out you know, are they like triathletes or anything like that? And then I watched the, was it uh, Bob Harper? Is that his name? From the, yes. the Big Loser? Oh yeah. Yes. Back you know, he's gym. super, yeah. super fit guy. And I, you know, I would watch the show and I'd watch what they were eating. I'm like, no, they're all oh, they're feeding and the stuff that's, oh, it's so damaging. And then he ended up, cause he, wasn't he the one that uh, had the heart yeah, 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 yeah. coffee, which is like, yeah. I think it's like a tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of coconut oil in your coffee every day. Yes. That's yes. the key to it. like, oh, oh my gosh. Yes. And then he has this event, right? In, in the gym. Yes. Super yeah, fit guy. Gym. You know, and I'm like, see, yes. you can't just exercise this stuff away. You, but you can't. Know, that's what yeah. we're taught our whole lives. I yeah. tried. I tried. And I, I gave it a value and effort. And I'm glad I don't have to <laughs> have that same sort of effort, um, quite honestly. And Angel, she, she said it so well. She said, you, you know, honey, you, you were in quicksand. I was in quicksand and I was trying to get out and I just could not get out. And the whole food plant-based lifestyle and way of living was the only thing that saved my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, now I'm starting to reverse heart disease, mm -hmm. which is incredible. Um, and I can't wait to get my next heart scan to see know how much progress I've made. Um, so I'm excited about that. So yeah, excited. we are too. And what did, what did the doctors say as you're coming off these meds? <laughs> so, so what happened? So he had to keep, <laughs> Jeffrey, he had to keep calling them and try, and they weren't calling him back. They weren't calling him back. And they were yeah. asking me, well, you know, because Angel basically, she has a, um, you know, a cuff and, and, you know, got a skull, so she can take my blood pressure. She was taking my blood pressure like three or four times a day just to make sure that, it was a controlled under doctor supervision, you know, um, weaning off of the blood pressure medication. Um, not so much with the cholesterol medication. I talked to my primary care physician and he was like, no, you can come up with that right away with these numbers. It's incredible. Um, but funny story, the last time I went and saw my cardiologist, um, he, so this is a new cardiologist because we relocated. He asked me, why was I there? He goes, why are you here? And I told him my story and he goes, well, you don't need to be here. I don't need to see you. He's like, you don't need a cardiologist. You don't need a cardiologist. He's had a cardiologist for 20 years. <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. Exactly. 
it was during COVID and I had to sit in the car and I said, well, I'll stay here and I'll work. And you go into the doctor and I expected a normal cardiac visit. And he came out within a few minutes. I said, what's wrong? He said, the doctor wanted to know why I was here. And said, I, don't think it <laughs> I mean, oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> what? That's exactly. so great. He goes, if you want to come and see me once a year, you, you can, can talk. He said, it's fine, but you don't need to see a cardiologist. You're fine. But the original cardiologist that he was seeing in the lipid doctor, um, he had to keep calling, calling, and calling. And then finally they said, well, yeah, you can come off the medication. And that's, that's I think, something that they had the nurse call yes, you or something. Yes, the nurse and that, that was really incredible. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Did they want to know why? Were they? Right, exactly. Were they curious why? Because we so, the, so don't want to know. Question. So I actually explained to them what I was doing. So, Angel, <laughs> at first, when I called him, to your point, I was kind of very uh, short and just said, you know, this is what I need to do. This is my, my blood pressure. So, we need to explain to them exactly what you're doing, exactly what you're eating, and exactly, you know, the diet that, that, you, that you've taken on and some of the reasons why the drastic, you know, changes and lowering of your blood pressure. Because my blood pressure medication at one point was so low, I was getting dizzy. And I, you know, I was just, it was, it was, it was, it was, you know, working against me. So I said, wait a minute, I gotta get this come off of this stuff and wean myself off of it. So yeah, good point. I did explain to them exactly what I was doing. And that's when the nurse said, wow, great job. That's awesome. Yeah, that's yes. fantastic. Yes. Awesome. And that's something that we say when, when people write into us, cause we don't ever give medical advice. Right. And the first thing when people write us, I ask them, do you have any chronic conditions now? And are you on medications? Cause we have a course and stuff. And I tell them, Call your doctor and tell them what you're doing right. because the result can be so dramatic so fast that your medications have to be tapered off right. or they actually can really start working against you. It sounds like that's exactly yeah. Exactly. That's yes. very we important. got medical advice. We got blood work because to your point, I was always so protective, but when he was on the medication and we didn't want him to come off and he had that doctor 20 years ago that said, you'll have to take this medication for the rest of your life. So I'm not a doctor either, and uh, I wouldn't want him to have an adverse event. Exactly. No, but that, that's, that's great to your point. Um, we kept the doctor informed and just, you know, helped them understand what I was doing and the reasons why the changes were taking place. And they understood. And after a few, I think they were tired of hearing from me because I was calling them like, hey, this is, this is what my levels were. This, yeah, exactly. You I wasn't feeling well. I was basically over-medicating myself. I didn't need to medicate the, the so. very first time the one nurse called him back, she said, the doctor said, why don't we up the, he was taking two, why don't we up the one and lower the one? And that should help you feel better. And he, Terry said, no, my goal is not to up one and lower one or adjust. My goal is to come off. Right. Exactly. So that was the first recommendation was to actually adjust the medication. Exactly. Yeah. So I had to really not be firm, but just kind of take control and say, hey, look, you know, I know my body. Um, I know what I'm doing. I believe in this. Um, it's working. It's work. And right. kind of guide them and lead them to what, you know, um, know what the end result was, which is great. So as a question to that, um, did you, so did you start right away? Like after watching the Game Changers, you just started and jumped full in 100%? Full in with both feet, absolutely. After game changers, that was it. We, I think, we went to our refrigerator and we 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 start taking stuff and moving stuff over. We gave stuff away and right. Yeah. I mean, it was the set in our cupboards. We read, you know, we, we took everything out of our cupboards that we weren't gonna no longer eat, and we went shopping that day. And oh my god, oh, we replaced kind of out with the old and in with the new. So yeah, we <laughs> that's that day. That day yeah. It was awesome. One thing I hear people saying when they transition to any diet is, I need to eat this stuff that's in my kitchen because it's waste. Right. Right. Yeah. right. And what Terry and I decided is that if that stuff is literally killing us, which we learned that it literally was, why would I continue? That's almost like knowing that you're going to die from smoking, I guess, and just keep doing it. So, um, I said we were getting rid of this stuff and we did. Yeah, but yeah. it was really him after he negotiated <laughs> shrimp and <laughs> salad very quickly. He's a negotiator. And so I said, okay, but I want you because I hit him right where the guys are working out. You know, you got guys lifting stuff you could never, never fathom in your lifetime eating veggies. Right. right. And, I, and I could I could relate. I could relate immediately to the movie. And 
I mean, to the documentary. We sat down and we watched it and we just talked and I was fired up, man. I was fired up. Yeah. I was ready well, to that's go. What it, you know, sometimes <laughs> that's what it takes, right? You know, it takes, you know, you kind of got to get your will up there. You know, we yeah. both read the book and, and we just decided we have to do this 100% because we know how, how easy it is for things to sneak back in or it's like, oh, well, only on Friday, but then all of a sudden it's Friday and Wednesday yeah. and, Friday <laughs> and Sunday. We're like, nope, exactly. we have personalities. And we have to go 100% in and just do it. And I, I'm so glad that we did. I think yeah. for us, I think that was way easier because then we weren't as, as tempted, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know? exactly. It doesn't, doesn't prolong uh, getting to the results. Right. So mm -hmm. if we make the changes, you know, we, we started losing weight right away. Yes. And we weren't so even fast. exercising. Like we literally were just, just walking. walking. And just weight just kept coming off. And we would look at each other like, how is this possible? Yeah. How did exactly. we, we had the same reaction. We had the same reaction. As a matter of fact, I was losing so much weight, I started to kind of cut back on my cardio workouts. And my, and my doctor said, well, we don't want to cut back on your cardio workouts. Well, Angel said, well, we need to eat more. Exactly. So we had to, we had to eat oh, more. Oh, how exciting! Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, Karen was making pasta at 9, 10 o'clock at night. We eat pasta at 9 or 10 o'clock at night. And he started to go down. I said, pretty soon I'm going to be able to take you. You better eat. Yeah. So it was really, really good. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that, that's, you know, that point, something that we, we tell people, when, you, when people focus on whole food plant-based because they have to, like they have a health issue and they're scared, they think they're losing. It's like, right. what will I eat? I'm losing it's everything. Reduction. And we always chuckle because we feel so spoiled because we eat so much and so many different things that yeah. we never ate before. It was always a exactly. narrow you know, set of things that we, most they say, uh, Dr. Gregory, I think they did a study. Most people eat like six meals. They yeah, learn how to make six about six meals. That's their repertoire. They just rotate between them. And yeah. now it's like we're constantly that was me eating too. new stuff. But it, it was mainly because I, I didn't really know how to cook. You know, I would just cook kind of what I what I learned growing up and what, what my mom knew. made and, you know, what I knew. And yeah, all of a sudden, like, I don't really know how to cook this stuff. So we were eating a lot of raw stuff in the beginning just because I really didn't know how to cook these things, you know, or had no experience with it. But it's a great discovery, right? Yeah. That's a great discovery. Yeah. 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 Discovery. And it was just a slow building process from there, but it was so much fun because we realized, you know, we had a little handful of, of recipes that we liked and we were just eating and eating and, you know, like just <laughs> eating all the time. Which, <laughs> Evan, for us, we love to eat, you know? <laughs> and then it was like, oh gosh, we need, a, we need another recipe in here. We need to throw some more, you know, what are you missing? How do we transform that? Yeah, yeah, we focused so on our fun. we focused on the worst foods, and later realized that that's actually a key. Yeah, is whatever your foods are that are a stumbling, like triggering the or... thing that you crave the most. Learn how to make that thing plant based, and then everything else is easier because you can have pizza, you can have yeah, you can have that every day, cheesecake. It's like you can eat all that stuff plant based, and everything else is is. It, there's nothing to it's it to make bonus, yeah. so all our early recipes are really decadent because it was all the stuff we were wanting <laughs> right you know. right you can have anything though you are so right and i for us the hardest part was that we could start to eat because for four years before that we were supporting my mother she got diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and she's very much like you Jill. she's not trying to go to the doctor and she is not trying to be sick i mean that's <laughs> it and she is not taking medication under any, if a doctor told her you're going to die if you don't go on cholesterol, uh, oh well, I'm not taking it. But she wants to change the way she eats. So when she got diagnosed with that immediately, she was like, okay, I'm going to cut out all this stuff and eat this way so that I can bring it down naturally. And so Terry and I, in support of her, to give her support, stopped eating potatoes, rice, pasta. And I'm all Italian, like, I'm here today because of pasta and cheese, you know, <laughs> and, and all of that thing, any type of bread, we stopped eating pizza. Terry and I went to the Italy for the first time and did not eat any pizza. 
Oh, I know, I'm so bummed now. I told him we have to go back to exactly. the exactly. well, We ate a lot of cheese. We, we ate a ton cheese. of cheese. And oil. And, and fish out and of the fish ocean. Fish out of the ocean, yeah. Yeah, we, we hogged out on that. But that's how we started. So when we went on this, our hardest transition, because Terry was saying, I'm not eating whole grain bread. I'm not eating potatoes, especially white ones. I'm not eating pasta. Angel. You know that's not good for us and and so the hardest thing for us was the food that we could eat it wasn't the food that we couldn't eat it was the food that we could eat right exactly and folding it back in and then because there's so much you can exactly. eat when exactly. people say what do you eat i was like well it's easier to tell you the things i don't eat because i eat so much right exactly. right well, or, or, you know, because you're coming from the, like, carbs are the bad guy, right? Mm -hmm. Well, carbs is a really broad term, but I think most people think carbs is bread, pasta, rice, potatoes, yeah. right? Yeah. And those things are actually all okay. It's the other, you know, it's it's different thing, like the processed sugar, white flour, you know. That's right. right. And the saturated fat. Right. Exactly. And yeah. the dairy and, and all of that, you know, how it gives you inflammation. Mm -hmm. It's just terrible. Absolutely. So I used to triple jump in college and I had really bad knee pains, almost arth arth um, arthritic in, in my knees and joints. All of that is gone. All of that is gone. I mean, That's amazing. My, my recovery between my workouts is just a lot shorter. Um, I used to give myself a few days off in between running. I don't have to do that anymore. I lift more weight than I've ever lifted. Um, I feel... I feel I feel like I'm 20 years younger. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. It's, it's, it's crazy. Incredible. It's, and I, I'm going to say something <laughs> crazy, and I probably shouldn't, but it's not. Terry sweats like there's no tomorrow. So his sweat machine works really, really well, which means that his butt. And, you know, he wasn't so sweet smelling after he worked out. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah he sweats. but it's different. You guys, it's, so it's different. different. How, I don't know why he doesn't. It's so It's different. the weirdest thing. Why yep. doesn't he stink? I mean, <laughs> yep. Yep. That's so no animal protein, none of that stuff I used to put yeah. in my body. Yeah, yeah, I call it the meat sweats. Exactly. You can tell guys that are just like, you know, all puffed up and you know it's and they start sweating and I'm like, ooh, it's that greasy sweat. Like yes, oh, yes. Oh, it's the meat yes. sweats. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. You're tracking with me. Exactly. I'm like, honey, you're so drenched, but you don't <laughs> right. so true. So true. While we're waiting for that, I'd like to share with you some background on our show. The Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show is crowdfunded, which means these free weekly recipe videos, along with our entire catalog of recipes on our website, plantbasedcookingshow.com, and our new Plant-Based Cooking Made Easy Cookbook, are all made possible in part by the generous patronage of our supporting members. By becoming a supporting member, you gain access to great member perks like monthly product giveaways, free downloads of our eBooks, and access to our in-depth courses, including our 28 Days Plant-Based Made Easy course, where we offer a step-by-step -step guide to making the switch to a fully plant-based diet. We create this show for the hundreds of thousands of viewers just like you who tune in each month from all over the world to make it easy for everyone to live a plant-based lifestyle. So if you love our content, please join us on our mission and become a supporting member today by following the link in the description. Okay, let's get back to the show. All right, so we heard your story, Terry. Come on, Angel, lay, us on, lay it on us. All right, yeah. great. Well, like, like Terry said, um, we actually started this because of uh, you know us trying to help him or me trying to help him. But I would say that I have been watching my weight since I've been eight years old, so I'm 49. I've been watching my weight for 41 years. So people will look at you and think that, what do you know? And how do you struggle with weight? And how did you ever struggle with weight? Well, I'm here to tell you I've struggled for 41 years. Um, I have had some really big days. I was trying to calculate how much weight I had lost from you know when I was the largest I was ever. And I'm probably down like 120 pounds, which I have never shared. <laughs> So you two are my BFF, I just share that. But um, from that time, but if I calculate all the things that I've done, all the struggles that I've had and the exercising, the eating and all that, I am actually 
have lost probably and between losing and gaining, I think like a thousand pounds or something. It's like incredible. Because you go up, right? Up and down, up and down, up and down. Because I don't care if you eat grapefruit, grapefruits for a month, it's gonna work. I don't care if you do Weight Watchers, I don't care if you do keto, I don't care if you eat Jenny Craig. It doesn't matter. All that stuff will work. There's no doubt it all works, but it's not sustainable. Yeah. Right. And eventually you're going to have to, you can't eat grapefruits for the rest of your life. I certainly can't count points. I'm busy running through airports. We're doing this. We're doing, we're all busy. And so, you know, I'm, it's all about restriction and I'm not good with restriction because I love food. <laughs> I'm just not good with restriction. And then somebody's telling me I can't eat something that I'm like, Oh, watch. That's me. what you want. Then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> watch me. So I don't like restriction and this, Whole food plant based has no restriction, and you have to eat and eat and eat. And you feel like when you wake up in the morning, like I ate a ridiculous amount of food yesterday, and I know when I get up, because I gained five pounds overnight in my old life, and I'm not exaggerating just by smelling the food. Um, <laughs> but I, I, seriously, and I'm like, I'm not gonna fit in my jeans in the morning. I am gonna be fat on the scale, and I'm gonna do self loathing because I'm very good at that. I'm super good at that. And um, and I don't have to do that. And so I'm happy. I'm eating. And I love pasta. I was twirling pasta the other night. He said, how'd you get that pasta on your fork like that? And I said, I'm Italian, baby. I, I <laughs> Man, watch me. So I can eat them under the table, but I don't have to worry anymore. So I was working out to maintain my weight, especially after having kids. It was pretty tough. But um working out twice a day and I'm not like Terry I'm I am not an athlete I'm not trying to be an athlete I'm not a self-proclaimed athlete <laughs> but I had to work out twice a day I had to eat salads a lot of days I wouldn't eat till three or four o'clock in the afternoon because I would have to limit myself so much so you're starving right and trapped and being exhausted and then your brain isn't working the way you want your brain to work because you're hungry and then when I stop to eat, I'm like, I'm going to have this low fat yogurt or I'll have this avocado or I'll have a hard boiled egg or whatever it was that I was eating, string cheese, you know, the nuts, because that's the healthy fat. Those nuts will, I love nuts, man. I can eat a pound of nuts just sitting here because I have to be so careful. Mm -hmm. um, and then we don't eat a lot of nuts just because for Terry's heart, but so it's been a real big struggle for me. I've tried everything. I've done everything because I don't, I want to feel good and I want to be healthy. I played sports as a young girl in school. I was, I wasn't cheerleading. I was doing lacrosse and basketball and all that to keep myself active so that I could keep my weight down. But it was constant. And even through supporting my mother, even through the keto diet, it all worked, but I had to get in that gym twice a day. And that's, that's a lot for, that's twice a, lot. a lot running. And then my back, I had a, um, a back surgery back in 1991 and just trying to get out of bed from that, that surgery. It wasn't a good decision, but you can't turn back the hands of time. And they were just like, it's arthritis. And then arthritis on top of working out like that on top of consuming a heck of a lot of dairy mm -hmm. um it i would get up in the morning and to say i look like an old lady is an understatement so i'd have to stretch and stretch and spend five or ten minutes stretching just so i can stand in the shower at, at my age i mean sure. even younger and now i don't have back pain this is the first time i haven't had back pain since like the 80s I'm not, and that is without an exaggeration. And then I started with heart palpitations to the point where a cardiologist stuck me on a heart monitor. And then they came back, I'm always a medical mystery, and said, well, you have extra heartbeats. You have this, you have that, you have these weird things happening, but I wouldn't worry about a cardiac exam. I was like, well, how do I stop these weird things from happening? Because I, that doesn't make me feel normal. And sometimes it would make me dizzy because it would happen so much and is you'll you know you'll be okay so I try to convince myself that that was normal and going whole food but I don't I have a 
haven't felt a heart palpitation. I'm jumping up and down. Our energy, I think sometimes Terry was like, could you just eat a little piece of chicken so you sit down? Did <laughs> 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 you, you crash? Did <laughs> yeah. you just like somehow crash? No way, I got things to do. So we're <laughs> That's really for me the the health. Like say, Terry said, for me the biggest thing was the inflammation mm -hmm. um, that I didn't realize. Because you're thinking, well, how can I have inflammation? I'm drinking all this water. I'm working out. I'm eating the way that this pyramid says I'm supposed to eat. I'm doing everything that I can humanly do, and his cholesterol is going up. And then the last time I had my cholesterol checked before this, my cholesterol was at 236. So Terry said. So with the heart palpitations, 236. And Terry was like, are you headed for a cardiac event? I don't know. I mean, it's crazy. So my LDL was 121. My cholesterol was 236. And then I had, um, it was about four or five weeks after we started whole food mm -hmm. plant-based, we had our blood drawn and my cholesterol was 170. <laughs> so that's 66 <laughs> points, right? Four weeks. In, in four weeks, my cholesterol was 170 and my LDL was down to 87. So I will get my blood work done again in about three or four months, but I know it's great. I mean, it's, it's That's been, incredible. That's it's incredible. been it's just crazy. unreal. And it's just, it's scary because on my dad's side of the family, it's my dad and four brothers. So there's five boys. And my grandfather that I never met, he died at 47 of a massive heart attack. Wow. And then my dad and all of his brothers, so all five of them have had open heart surgery. So they've all had that saw oh, taken yeah. to their chest. Goodness. And my dad currently has 11 cents in his heart. So, and my parents are not that old. And so I was like, okay, I'm definitely dying of a heart attack. And then on my mom's side, it was all cancer, every kind of cancer you can think of. So I said to Terry, enjoy me, honey, buy me nice stuff, because I'm not going to be here long. No. And yeah, but now I know that it's not hereditary. Yeah. It's not. Right. This stuff is not hereditary. It's preventable. It is it's preventable. True. And it's sure. reversible. Diet, diets, diets are hereditary. Diet is hereditary. So if you're all eating the same thing, of course, you're going to have the same health conditions, right? Yes. Exactly. It, Exactly. That's exactly correct. You have to have meatballs and Italian sausage every Sunday or it's not going to be okay. Yeah. yeah. So how did your, uh, uh, just following up on that, so how did your family react to that? Because I know for me, going back home and, you know, pulling up to the table or at Thanksgiving or whatever it is, and I'm eating different than everybody else. And, you know, there's this kind of attitude, you know, how, yeah. and, with being Italian, I know that's a really strong yeah. cultural uh, food, culture. food culture, you know. Oh, so we love the food. We we make food, you eat the food, and if you don't like the food, you offend me, and I'll never talk to you again. Right. <laughs> um, so, so, yes, it was, I noticed that the, our adjustment in our life was hard on our family and hard on our friends. It was almost like we were cramping their style or exactly. something. Exactly. Yeah. So um, people get very offensive about food and it's like, well, you you don't have to eat it because we can dine with you. I, I, I swear, I tell everybody, I can find something to eat at any restaurant. I'll go, I'll be social. Mm -hmm. I love sparkling water, so it's my little fizzy drink or whatever. <laughs> so, um, but yes, I'm still talking to my dad about this because I mean, triple bypass, 13 stems. It's probably time to be thinking about that. But he does tell me my blood work was best when I lived with you and Angel. <laughs> and then my mom, she was following that very uh, strict diet. She was not taking the metformin that they wanted her to take. And she did bring her blood sugar down. But then she leveled off at like 120 for her blood sugar. And she would go down to 110. And that's still not, not great. So Two weeks after Terry and I started Whole Foods Plant Based, I was like, mom, you have to do this. My mom loves meat. I mean, loves meat. She's a carnivore. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And she's like, no hamburgers of this. My, my life is already so limited. Angel, you know I can't eat pasta. You know that. I, you don't have blood sugar. And I said, mom, just please try it. So she's been doing it. She's a bigger advocate than Terry and I. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
fantastic. She lecture me. Are you supposed to, is, is that okay? I mean, she's lecturing <laughs> me now, so I absolutely love it. And her blood sugar is under a hundred. And oh. for her, because she's just a little tiny Italian woman. She tells me she's five foot, but don't, don't believe it. Because <laughs> in her mind, she's five foot. But um, she's just a little tiny thing. And so when you're that small and anything you eat kind of goes this way, right? And she told me last week, she said, I am at the lowest weight now that I can remember. It, like in my history of remembering. Wow. And not even, and she's, she's like, I mean, yeah, just exactly. these wonderful exactly. things. So, so for my mom, she's been really. It's been transformational. Yes, been transformational for our whole for her, family. Actually. We're going to have, she's going to come visit us. So we're going to have her in our kitchen. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm super excited because now I have both Angel and Mom in the kitchen, so I'm very excited. You're set. Right, right. <laughs> Is she still on uh, metformin? Is she off? Nope. No yeah. medications at all. Then what happened was those um, cholesterol, like or, or blood pressure, blood sugar blood medicines, sugar. they make your cholesterol go up and your blood pressure. So that became a whole other issue. She has low blood pressure, uh, good. I mean, low, not yeah, yeah. Blood pressure. Um, the, her sugar, her A1C was even amazing. I mean, not even just the, the, like I'm telling you 100, but the actual three month A1C was incredible. And her cholesterol is, I mean, she's just doing so good. So she's running circles around Terry and I right now. And she's probably, I'm, I'm guessing, 70? Uh, you're spot on. She's 70. Mom, love you. Um, <laughs> that's, that's but a, yes, she's in just itself, right 70. She is insane, right? I mean, she she she'll be she sending is. me emails at one o'clock in the morning. Angel, <laughs> I know it's too late to text you or call you, but it's like, <laughs> it's like one o'clock in the morning. This is when teenagers are partying. I've been sleeping that's for hours. Fantastic. Back up in the morning. I'm doing my Zumba online. It's just <laughs> incredible at the ages that this can just affect you and the sharpness in her mind. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, it's just so quick. I mean, her transformation was so fast too. That's yeah. immediate. And it was immediate. And the hardest thing for her, and she did tell me, she said, I'm going to try this stuff and see, but I know it's going to raise my blood sugar. She was convinced. But when I started talking about pasta, the only reason she transformed is because she probably loves fruit more than anything. And when you're a diabetic and they put you on a diabetic diet, they tell you that fruit is right. bad for you because it has natural sugar. Mm -hmm. And so I said, mom, you could eat all the fruit you want. And that's how I got her. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> I got her. Yeah, maybe that's the key. You take the, the favorite food and you're like, you eat all of this that you want. <laughs> she called us one night and she said, what am I supposed to I just ate a whole watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> so you're probably just going to be up all night peeing, but that's okay. <laughs> exactly. She exactly. was, but that's really what got her there. And now just the 50-50 plate and managing that, eating as much as she wants. But you just get to a point where this is so easy and natural that you don't even think about it. And she's saying the same things. Like, Angel, I don't, I don't know... The list of what I don't eat is what I tell people because what we do eat is just we eat everything. Right. Like and you, you don't said. have to count, yeah, you don't have to count calories. You don't have exactly. to count carbs. Exactly. You don't have to do any of that. There's no thinking about it. It's just yeah. like exactly. oh, is this a whole food? Is this a fruit, a vegetable? Is this, you know, like yeah. Yes, is this a exactly. grain? Is this this easy? Yeah. And I know at 49 how hard it is now. My body is, you know, trying to fight me, but it's not winning on losing weight. I'm the winner. I can imagine at 70, it's probably that much harder. Absolutely. And, and me from the outside looking in, I mean, Angel, she really had really bad back issues. She really struggled. And I, you know, looking from the outside in, I'm thinking, my gosh, she's only in her, in her 40s. What, what is it going to be like 20 or 30 years from now? So I was, I was so concerned. Right. But now... She's jumping. She's just a, a little jumping thing. So More she's she's fine. Time. And then mom had really bad hip issues. Yeah. Had really bad hip yeah. issues. Has had hip replacements. 
and she's has, has no pain. And she didn't even realize it with the hip. She she had called me maybe a month into this, and she said, I didn't even realize that my hip pain went away because it becomes part of your life, mm -hmm. right? right? Right. And she said, but I realize now my hip pain is gone. Mm -hmm. And this is somebody who's had hip replacements and oh, I'm getting up. Hold on a second, you know, and just it, it's unbelievable. It's incredible. It's incredible. I mean, we are, so it's like, we just want to share the word and help so many people because we're fired up. Terry's like, we should go like in stadiums and talk to people. <laughs> he said, <"I'm> not, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. like, in my culture, and he's right, he said, people are dying because they don't know. They don't and, know. and it's so heartbreaking. We, you just read something about an athlete that just died. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I forget the name, but um, it, it's, 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 it's just incredible. It's a silent food. Some foods are just such a silent killer, and we don't know. We right. Don't know well, I think it's it's so easy to get off track and to be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you watch TV or, or movies or even commercials, there's so much information out there. It's really difficult to sort it all out and like what's right, because one, one week, you know, the news was saying that what was it? I, I remember they had the photo on Time magazine well, about butter, butter. Butter's back. Butter's mm -hmm. back. Now butter's good. Butter's, you know, and then next week, butter's bad. And the same thing yeah. with bacon, all those right. things, you know. And I think, I, I mean, maybe it's just total conspiracy, but it's like, maybe the point is just to keep com people confused. I don't think you so. know, it yeah. keeps them on, they know, it keeps them yeah, medicated. Yeah. That's what you do. Yeah. Making money. Exactly. There's no money, in, you know. We always joke about it. There's no money advertising for broccoli. Like you see, <laughs> right. broccoli. We joked about making commercials yeah, for broccoli on our show. Oh my gosh, we'll join you. You know what, Joe? We, we eat bacon. We make it out of rice paper. It's awesome, exactly. right? Bacon, lettuce, and tomato. To your point, you made earlier, Jeffrey. You said we eat everything. It just everything. doesn't come in that form. Exactly. Right. And then you don't feel terrible, like you said. You know, you knew that when you were eating terribly that you wake up in the morning you feel like you gain five pounds automatically and yeah. sometimes I do that I'll overeat or well you know I've been yeah. <laughs> one of our last recipes was this peanut butter cheesecake or peanut butter chocolate peanut butter cheesecake oh I saw oh, wow. it, it was like I, and I had you know we had a pretty big dinner that night and you know and then we had dessert and I was like oh man I really overdid it tonight I ate way too much because that just was <laughs> so good and I, and I woke up the next morning yeah. I felt fine. I didn't feel fine. bloated. Like normally I'd wake up and like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be bloated all day. Terrible. So groggy and just, and then it starts the self-loathing tapes going off. Oh, yes. here we go again. I'm gaining, yes. I'm pudgy again, you know. <laughs> this is woman's speak. We're good at beating ourselves up, you know. We are so, I mean, Terry, Terry said for years, he would say, what are we going to take for you? When am I going to hear you say, you, you you love yourself or why are you always saying you're always saying that stuff about the person that i love he said exactly. same the same exactly. he, same conversation he's like yep. exactly. even accepting a compliment i have to like negate it with oh, oh, this is what i did that was wrong or what i did that was bad or, I've ate, <laughs> wait, you know like i have to I'm, i'll i'll set them up i'm like i know you're not going to hear this but you look wonderful <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to listen to me, but you, you look great today. It's just like, oh, yeah, it starts, you know, not, yeah. not hearing you. Yeah. I feel like I'm looking at it. Yeah. Ugh. Something you said, Terry, I think is important too, is that, uh, and I, I think his, his name is Milton Mills. He's one of the plant-based doctors, but he spoke to the uh, panel that makes the food recommendations for the USDA. And he was saying that when, when the government says that you should eat dairy, and like, if you, if you're of African descent, it's like 85 or 90% of people are lactose intolerant, mm -hmm. unless you're descended from like Northern Scandinavian country, yeah, Nordic people. Yeah. Nordic. Like all in like Asian folks is like 95%. Like people wow. cannot digest dairy proteins. It is, it is a global problem. And to have the government telling you that, and even, uh, for years, like forcing children to, to consume right. it in school. Right. You have to mm -hmm. finish, here's you your milk portion. Your milk. Yeah. He's like, this is, this is a racial justice issue as well as food. Like right. you are That's making right. people sick and then pointing at them like, oh, look at this whole population of people has all these diseases right. and they're all related to food. Right. And that it Absolutely. doesn't get ca called out enough. That, that Absolutely. So it's, it's a mission, it's our mission. Uh, you, yeah. you are so spot 
on. You it's can mature true. yourself by eating. It's so incredible. And it's not porn, right? Yeah. It's not man-made. It's not anything. And you have to, the only problem is the amount that you do have to consume. It, that's the hard part. Right. The rest of it is just so, it's so right. easy. And it's educating yourself. And it's, it's understanding. Right. It's educating yourself. It's understanding, you know, what's healthy for you and how it's healthy for you and just putting it all together. So um, we're aligned there, Jeffrey. Yeah. Absolutely. And we found that that like with your with your parents, you're you're going against what is sort of recognized as as cultural wisdom or right. or my grandmother's wisdom. My grandmother ate this and she lived to be a hundred. Right. Mm -hmm. And there isn't the recognition of how saturated these foods are in our society and how people start eating this stuff now, very, very young, where they have right. children, they do autopsies on children who die like in car accidents. And they find they have plaque in their arteries at 10 years old. Yeah. Isn't wow. That incredible. Wow. Terrible. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's horrible. I, I, like you said, I don't want to say it's a conspiracy, but it's just, it's odd. And why aren't we being educated on it? If we're, if we're going and saying, we don't want to take these medications, what else can I do? You know, I'm, I'm working out, I'm eating right. Terry's doctor told him, was it two or three cardiologists? Uh, three cardiologists to go to one you know, he, third. There's only one third of what you can control as it relates to your blood pressure. That's what he told me. He said one third. You can work out. You're only controlling. You, you can work out as much as you like, Terry. But there's only that's only controlling one third. The other two, he said, the other two was the food that you ate, and then how your body absorbs the food that you eat, how it metabolizes throughout your your body. Um, which he was true, but what what he, what he failed to mention was. The food that I was eating, <laughs> the food. how healthy it was for me. So, um, and of course, you know, they aren't, they aren't educated. They, 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 they don't know. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And but that's why we're on here, right? You know, that, that's, and once, you know, once there's enough of us out there, it's going to, we're going to hit that tipping point. And then this will be just commonplace, right? Yeah, I, exactly. I cannot, exactly. I cannot wait for that. And that's what we want to do. That's why we, we appreciate you too so much. Because you've been educating people on this for so many years. And um, when Terry and I came together, we always talked about helping people, some kind of humanitarian something or other. And Terry used to say, we're gonna call our, you know, what we do, hope. Hope, helping, helping other people exceed. And, oh, oh nice. that's yeah. beautiful, I love that. So we, we kept going into the inner city and trying to help people you know, financially with food and working in food kitchens and doing all this stuff. And, um, and then getting a little bit discouraged because it seems like sometimes we only want to help people on the holidays when people are hungry, even when it's not Thanksgiving and Christmas. And so we're trying to adopt families and trying to do this. And, and when we started doing this, it was just a light bulb came on. And Terry was like, this is it. We can help everybody right yeah. right and it doesn't have to be one-on-one -on -one. like i mean that's the, the discovery yeah. for us was that you know because we've tried it one-on-one -on -one for quite a while and all different ways in the library in our home and and it just wasn't very effective you know it was just like you know teaching a handful of people at a time and maybe only one of them really you know it really sank in right and once we started on youtube then it was just like oh okay we have access to so many people Right. So yes. Just instantly, mm -hmm. yeah. like, okay, exactly. yeah, this is our service. So we need to keep going with this because it's really, yeah, there's no, there's no number, right? Not, and it it's blows limited. your mind and it's worth it because, because there's effort, you know, there's a lot of effort to put that 15 minute video online. I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> wow. The effort, but when you're doing it, it's, it's you, you have this drive that you can't explain that's just like, I'm doing this for so many people. And even if I can only touch 50 people, that's 50 more people than I touched before. Exactly. Right. So, exactly. and, and, and tell our story and, and then they watch yours. It just, it's really incredible. You know, the hope is that it resonates. If one person just listens and it resonates with them, then we hope that that can just help them. And they'll tell another person, maybe something that they say will resonate with someone. So again, you guys, I mean, we, we, I mean, we, we, we admire you guys so much. You guys are incredible. So thank you for really being pioneers. And I think I mentioned that in my first email to you, Jeffrey, and, and to you, Jill. You guys are awesome. So 
we aspire to be, yes. you know, where you guys are. Part just, of what you guys are doing. <laughs> exactly. So we're, we're, we're happy to be a part of, of the Whole Food Place, uh, Whole Food <laughs> um, Pet Based family, if you will. And sure. um, we just can't, can't wait to fight the good fight with you guys. You know, I was best. excited. You guys are doing recipes, and it's something that we've tried to do uh, incrementally with our show. Because the way I envision it is that every culture has to make this transition. Every, you know, basically, every culture in the world is consuming animal products in some way. So all of the traditional foods and cultural foods and religious and holiday foods, they all have to be transformed. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be abandoned, but it's like right. those things have to be made into plant-based. So the more people that come from different cultures and say, hey, here's all the recipes that I grew up eating, I, I found a way right. to make them plant-based. It creates this library where anyone can come into this. And it's like, hey, these, you know, I, I grew up, a friend of mine wrote me yesterday and he's like, so can I still have oxtail? He's like, I grew up eating. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I don't know how to do that plant-based yet, yeah, but someone sure needs to figure way. that we'll out. We'll figure it out. We'll just figure <laughs> yeah. it out. I'm sure there's yes. a way. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, or we have some people that, you know, uh, I learned this West African peanut sauce from our kids' grand uh, or godmother. She's mm -hmm. from Gambia, Africa. And, you know, typically it's like, it's palm oil and it's um, goat or chicken. And, you know, it's really, really heavy, but it's super delicious, you know, and everybody eats that. That's like a staple thing, you know? And when I started making it and we put it out on the show, we started hearing people from, you know, different parts of, of, of so, Africa that, you there, know, make yeah. a different versions of that same stuff. And they were like, well, I thought I had to give this up. I'm so happy that you made this in a way that I can still eat it and remember wow. where I come from. That's I was like, that's it right there. Because I'm like, that's you we have to give up your, your things that you're so um, connected to and comfort food. foods. Mm -hmm. So yes. I keep looking, you know, I'm like, I have my lists. We need more like, Italian. I, yeah, we, we need, need more Italian, Italian right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we can do it. I mean, for me, I grew up making homemade gravy. We call it red gravy, um, you know, spaghetti sauce. It's marinara, yeah. And yeah. yep, so I grew up making that with my family, my aunts, my uncles, you know, my dad, my mom, everybody. And so you did that. My kids didn't know that any kind of that stuff came out of the jar. So that made me a good mother. I didn't have to educate them, but as long as they don't know what ragu is, you're good. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're all set. So anyway, so I would always make that and you make it with a lot of oil, you know, start with 3000 calories of oil and hundred percent fat. And then the onions and the garlic and the, obviously the veggies because you right. have the tomatoes. Um, and then you have to have Romano cheese because how could you possibly eat it without that? So that was my biggest, in the beginning, I thought, well, because on a keto diet or any Mediterranean diet, that is very good, that gravy that I just mentioned. And so we have perfected it. And I'm beaming because on Easter, Italians eat pasta and a meal, a, a snack called pizza game, which um, Americans call like ham pie. Oh. And so we eat pizza game and we eat homemade pasta and raviolis and all that. And we had a normal Italian Easter. Oh, oh nice. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was, was amazing. better. Was amazing. And after we ate all that food. And we didn't crash. We Who didn't need a nap, right? <laughs> exactly. We didn't need a nap. I mean, it was the best it Easter was. ever. We it had was. so much fun. I forgot about that. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And so my mom sent me a picture I made your Easter gravy. And it was, oh. That's it right there. Oh, there what? what That's oh, wow, that is such a compliment too. Like your mom, yeah. you know, because you know, especially for my mom. You yeah. know, another generation Italian, like exactly. yeah. for her to say it was so good. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, she couldn't wait. She sent me pictures. Look at my gravy. It's exactly how you said to do it. And but it takes time. You can't give up. You have to keep going after. It. And you find the little things that you don't know that will work and then you do it and these light bulbs come on and then it's fun yeah, yeah. and yes. then it and then it just clicks and it's like you know before you make it like that's gonna work like we just yeah. came up with this one secret jeff oh. actually pepperoni i used to be a pepperoni head like pepperoni pizza was my oh, this is so that's, me. That's, me too. that's me oh pepperoni. wow i smell yeah. it even today i still smell it and i'm like oh that smells good <laughs> 
but I know all that grease. I know it makes me feel terrible. Right. We figured it out. You made okay. it. We nice. figured it out. It's going to be one of our Delicious. next recipes coming up. Nice, we, nice. We can't oh wait. my nice. goodness. Sliceable, sliced really thin. We Looks make like pizza with it. Smells Looks like, like it. Smells like it. It's stopping. Oh. We were eating it. Oh I made a pepperoni God. sandwich for the day, and I was like, I can't. Here's the crazy thing. But no grease. It's from the bread recipe that we yeah. make that turned into meatloaf, that yeah. turned into hamburger. Our shows as we've gone, Burger, the base please. is the base of the bread, the gluten-free bread that Joe yeah. was making because it, it holds shape. It holds texture. Oh. And then we're like, you know, what is pepperoni really? It's a bunch yeah, of ground up meat and, and seasonings. It's and all this flavor. Stick it together. Right. So it's like, what are the seasonings? And we'll use this base that's gluten-free which is the other amazing thing because most vegan meat stuff is all gluten-based yeah. mm -hmm. and she's like slicing off pieces of the pepperoni and i can't and believe it works roll these big pepperonis it. it's oh, oh my god we can't wait. i cannot we can't wait. wait i told you my secret you better uh exactly oh, that's recipes because i want <laughs> that, that that's exactly. right i told you my oh my gosh because you are a pepperoni oh my god. lover i gotta check big that out because my son is actually celiac and so he literally cannot have gluten. And so he wants, I showed him some of the game changers in his, in his mid to late 20s. There's different reasons why he wanted to take his wife out. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. But, um, and now she's pregnant, huh? Um, but anyway. <laughs> so, but he, um, he says, mom, it gets really hard because there's so many things that I can't have. He can't sit down and eat, you know, the, the whole wheat pasta. But, but I'm like, there's so many things that you can can have. And so that I appreciate too, because I know you make a lot of things gluten-free and I'm trying to do that more as well mm -hmm. so that I can show him. I made him some bread out of potatoes, like mashed potatoes and mixed a whole bunch of stuff together. And he's, he's a tough customer. He is, he is. And uh, he said, mom, this is really good. But he wanted it to rise a little bit more, so I got yeah, to tweak it. Work. But it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yes. Yeah. I mean, my my gluten free bread, it, it does rise just a teeny bit, but it's a pretty dense loaf still. It's like <laughs> gluten. That's the only thing that really works that way. Yes, exactly. Well, I saw you when you said don't grind. I learned from you. You said don't grind the oats as fine yep. because if you do, it'll be more dense. I didn't know that. I thought the fine. I, I, I didn't the either, oats, but I just kept getting so many uh, replies from people or questions from people making that bread where they would buy oat flour. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, so what's the difference? Because the people that are buying the oat flour from the store are having this issue. And I'm like, so, okay, so what would be the issue? I'm like, oh, because I don't really grind it very fine. I looked at, I got some store-bought stuff and it's really fine, like white flour. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, okay. So don't over grind. And, and which is better anyway, better. because then it's still more whole, right? Yeah. Right, right. That, that's exactly. all the issue for uh, cakes. cakes. She was too. using like banana flour, stuff that's harder yeah, to get. Yeah, I was trying to figure and it out. And we just did this whole series of cakes that are like thin, Girl Scout Thin Mint Cookie Cake. Yeah, and it's dangerous. Oreo Cookie Cake. But oh, the nice. cake part is so cakey and amazing and it's all gluten-free. Yeah. But it was grinding the oats. When just she solved that, lightly. it solved the problem for all the other stuff we were making. Yeah. That's, I learned that from Jill and it's unbelievable. I don't tell Terry all the tips I get from me, Jill, because then he thinks I'm amazing. He's like, oh my gosh, my wife is so smart. Like, no, you take it. You take it. No, that's good. Take it and adapt it. Do your own thing. It's great. You know, but I didn't know that. I'm cooking my way through our stuff. Yeah. So I'm, we're going to make some shows on it, but you know, I've, I've just benefited for years. Like I do all the technical stuff, but Jill's been doing all this cooking. And I was like, you know, I, I really, I actually saw a guy uh, I'd play guitar and he had been teaching guitar for so long. He teaches online and he's like, you know, I've forgotten how hard it is to start playing guitar. So he flipped his guitar over and made a course of himself doing his course, but with the other hand, which is incredibly oh hard to do. And right. it made me think like, I need to do, I need to be the one that goes through our recipes because Jill's making all this stuff and, and it looks easy, but I keep having the same experience. I make a recipe and then it's I feel really like a kid. Good. I'm like, this is amazing. And it's really I'm an amazing good. Cook. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a great tip. You should do that. No, right? absolutely, absolutely. And Angel, she's just she has this knack uh, for just coming up with the right 
food combinations and ingredients. And she's always coming to me, honey, try this. I'm going to, I have an, I have an idea. I'm like, that's great. I get to taste test something, right. You know, it's, it's always a good experience, but, um, yeah, so she has But now we have to measure. Now that's the only yeah, problem is because yeah. you're trying to share recipes and now you have to measure. Oh, stuff. I know. Measure. Yeah, because and writing it down and writing down the steps. I miss stuff all the time. Still to this day, <laughs> after doing the show for this long, I miss steps in there. You know, luckily people will write me and they're so kind. You know, Aww. they're like, I noticed that in the video you did this. Did you mean to do that? Like, oh my gosh and I read the thing I'm like oh my gosh so many people have seen it already and I missed this step and the printable recipe is going to be wrong oh no uh, we're human <laughs> we're human oh, I, I catch it when I'm typing typing the recipes I, yeah I used to make make recipes or just make up stuff and Jeff's like did you write that down I'm like no I didn't I'll remember and I make yeah. it next time totally yeah, different and he's like what did you do last time because it was really <laughs> good last time so now I have a have I have this notebook that I keep in the kitchen that I'm like anytime I start anything even if I'm like not intending to make a recipe mm -hmm. it's just you know I'm coming up with something that night just because we have our misfits box and we have a ton of beets or something and I'm like okay <laughs> See? That's yeah. great. That's you have great. to write it down. And I, you know, I do forget. And I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I wrote that down because I wouldn't have remembered that I used those two things in here. I, I feel so much better now. That's that's what I did. Yeah, so. absolutely. Let's uh, we got Sorry. I want to make sure we just cover the questions just so we, we have everything here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we've covered most of this. Yep. Um, did you was there anything that you found difficult or that you struggle with now? In, in being plant-based? Was there something just like, oh, this is so hard? Or, cause I know people think that it's like, this is going to be so hard. So. Yeah. So for me, I guess I approached it from a different um, perspective just because it was so, again, I was racing a cardiac event. And for me, you know, when we saw game changers and I just, you know, cut it off right there um, and never looked back. Um, did I miss stuff? Yeah, I missed stuff, but I was folding in so many different foods that I hadn't eaten before. And I really didn't find, I guess the only thing that I, I struggled with was how much food I had to eat. <laughs> I mean, I had to eat a lot of food just to maintain um, a certain weight. But outside of that, I can't really think, at least for me, um, that that was difficult for me from that perspective because Jeffrey, I just thought about it so different. I thought about if I eat this, I'm literally, literally going to kill him. I'm literally going to kill him. So I thought about it totally different. But but most people don't think like that. Most people are like most me. people right. And, most and, people and don't. the dopamine is much more powerful than what you're telling me because I might I'll, then I'll die happy, right? I mean, <laughs> yes. what the heck? So I would say for me, the hardest part was. I think the outside world struggles with the choices that you make. And they want you to do their thing or they want you to, and, and they, and they pressure and they, they do things that they wouldn't normally do because they sort of get consumed in your lifestyle and the way that you want to eat, which yeah. is awkward. And then when you try to explain it to them, they get defensive because they don't want to hear about it. But it's like when you started it. <laughs> I, yeah. you started it. Well, I, I usually, I usually, you know, if people are, are asking or if I, I know there's a setup for that that situation. Yeah. I say, you know what? This is just something I'm doing for me, and I feel really good. So yeah. I, I, so I, it kind of just stops the conversation. I'm like, okay, this yeah. is a teachable moment. I can tell that they're really defensive and their walls are all up, and this is going to be one of these arguments, right? And I'm like, you know what? I'm just, it's kind of an experiment for myself, but I'm feeling really good and it's doing good for me for right now. So it's I'm working just for me, but I'll make you a hamburger, you know? And then when I get, cause I, cause I like to eat. And so if I think, especially in the beginning, when you're trying to navigate, what can I eat? And the things that I was so fearful of eating like potatoes and rice and on a keto diet, you know, you're only allowed to have this much spinach. You know, you can't, because that's a lot of carbs. Right. So if you do a little carb calculator, eating too much spinach or you know, vegetables or things that have carbs in them, they're out of the question. And I could eat all the peanut butter and peanuts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and bacon and eggs and cheese mm -hmm. that I wanted. 
but having, you know, more than a half a cup of spinach took my carb count over. So then going to my fridge and seeing a big juicy plum or peach mm -hmm. or, you know, because we started this in the summer last year. So fruit is so vibrant and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And and I grew up in a family that, you know, grew fruit and vegetables and Italians love citrus and all that wonderful stuff. And so going there and eating these oranges and stuff almost felt guilty because mm. they're so delicious and <laughs> you know and so getting away from that and then if I really felt like I wanted to be bad you know I would eat a baked potato or a baked sweet potato <laughs> wow. you know? and, and I was like I just had a baked potato with all of these greens and fruits and this is insane yeah. and then I would get on the scale and I swear it was I thought my scale was broken. I'm not. I, I said to Terry, I told Terry to go get another scale. I'm like, this scale, this scale is mine. I said, I said, this scale is broken. And I would say, honey, get on the scale. He's like, yeah, it's working. I, well, no, it doesn't work for me. It must be my <laughs> I mean, And I made him get another she was scale. She's driving me crazy. She's driving me crazy. It's so funny. Because how can you eat like that all day and then get up in the morning and your scale is like, you used to make me cry, yeah. right? Yeah. right? So that the hardest part for me is just, you know, it, you have to realize that you want to help people, but if they're not ready, you can't push because they can get pretty sensitive. You know, when you start talking about people's T-bones, I, mean, oh, I, I know, don't, don't touch it. And then accept that you can eat the things that you, that you can eat and enjoy them. Mm -hmm. And, and then it's so easy. Mm -hmm. That that was the hardest part for me. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. I want to make sure we got in the interview when you guys actually started. So when mm. did you when did you make the switch? So it was right like right in the beginning of August yeah. of last year. Of last year. August of twenty twenty. Yep. Wow. So you yeah. guys yeah. are still real newbies. Oh wow. We That's are. We amazing. Are. Exactly, we are. Yeah, and we had to come down off of all of those years and years and years because we've been on a diet since we've known each other. I Every know different why. diet known to man, and that's why when, when Angel came to me with, well, this is how, this is what we're going to do. I'm like, well, wait a minute, how's that even different from from this? And we're going totally contradictory to what, which one is right? To your point, Joe, so there's a lot of confusion, and I think that's it's designed oh, to confusing. Yeah. Yeah, and just your point about, you know, it was, it's hard to, I remember in, in the beginning thinking, gosh, we're eating so much food and it's hard, it's hard to keep up that amount. But at some point, it kind of tapered off for us. And, you know, I think because we were all so um, maybe nutrition, nutritionally deficient, yeah. mm -hmm. it took your, a while to get own. our bodies back up to where everything was in line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it takes a lot of eating, of eating a lot of really nutritionally dense food to get you back exactly. to that normal level. Yeah. Then yeah. after that, I felt like it kind of tapered off and I felt like we were eating more of a normal amount yeah. of food. Yeah. But Absolutely. when you're dieting all the time, even a normal amount of food is, feels like in your mind, like you're overeating. Mm -hmm. Because Why? we've been, you know, dieting for why well, dieting forever, right. but you know, you have been controlling what you've eaten uh, for, for years. Terry's very, if you tell Terry to stop doing something, he stops. He's just not normal. Me, I'm more like, well, why? But I will try to negotiate a little bit, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. He's a, shrimp, he's a shrimp eater, and he, but even today, he'll say, thinking about eating that stuff makes me feel sick a little bit. Yeah, it yeah. just phases <clears throat> out. Yeah, because your body, yeah. knows, I think your body knows, like, you start smelling that and you're like, mm -hmm. there's something wrong there. Yeah. Like we, we have this, this supplement that has something that smells like fish oil. And mm -hmm. it, it's algae. It's oil. algae. But mm -hmm. for me, fish, I, I was never a fish lover to begin with, but anything mm -hmm. that had fish oil, all that smell, just, I get nauseous almost. And, or even, you know, if we're out at an event or anything, or, you know, now, right now, all our neighbors are out grilling and I go out there and I smell the, the meat tallow no, that's frying and it's like, wow. <laughs> it, it does change, but remember when that used to smell good? Oh, what are they making? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Or hot dogs. Ooh, it smells like hot dogs. Exactly. It yes, yum, let's go. But now, even Terry will say that, 
the thought of eating that makes my makes stomach hurt. And Jeffrey said, said something earlier about the intestinal and African American. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Terry has been an avid ice cream eater. Oh, he should God. have been on every ice cream commercial. Oh, I used to drink a lot of milkshakes in the summer because that's just what you do in the summer. And let me tell you, it was not pretty. It was not. It was not. I was, it was always a painful experience, and I never really knew why. I understood right. why. But to your point, yeah. yeah. And you can have milkshakes, grind up bananas. You can do all kinds of wonderful mm -hmm. stuff on a plant-based diet. Exactly. But Jeffrey, I think you had asked earlier, or Jill, like Terry watched the game changes, but how it really started was on Saturday night. Terry was. We were on the couch. It was like eleven o'clock, so Terry was out. <laughs> And I'm like, well, what can I watch? I'm, I'm, and I was still searching. I mean, at, even at 11 o'clock at night, he had been on that medication for six months and I'm searching, I'm searching. So I came across um, What the Hell. Oh, yeah. And I watched it. And when I was 20 minutes into that, I was like, Terry. And I kept trying to wake him up the whole time. <laughs> wake up. Oh, my wake up. Terry, Terry, Terry. <laughs> what, baby, what, what? And I'm, and so I said, well, he's annoying me and I got to watch this. So I watched it and watched it. And then we jumped up and it was probably close to midnight. And I said, come on, let's go. And I told him, we're done. We are so done with me. We're done. I was so excited after watching that. It was my expression. And so he was like, we're not going to eat meat. Okay. And he was so out of it. He was so tired. <laughs> so he got up on Sunday morning and he was like, we were, and he said, honey, did you say something last night about not eating meat? He really thought he was dreaming. Dream, yeah. And I said, yes, well, <laughs> tell me what, what we're going to eat because we don't eat this, we don't eat that. Don't worry about it. We're going to eat all this stuff. And right. so within less than five minutes, and it is the truth, mm -hmm. he said, all right, Angel, I'll do it. If that's what you want me to do, and I'm eating shrimp and I'm eating scallops. And I'll eat all that other stuff, but I'm eating shrimp and scallops. <laughs> so I said, okay. He's negotiating. And then I said, well, let's get ready for the day. And before we go to the grocery store, because I knew we needed to do grocery shopping and I already had it a little calculated in my head, let's go watch the game changers. And within 30 minutes, he was wilder than I was. <laughs> that's, awesome. that's so cool. So that's, that's really yeah, how exactly. it all started. One Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> Documentaries, and, it's magic. Yeah, and I don't know if you've seen Eating You Alive, but I did watch that. Um, it was incredible from a medical perspective. Right. And my cousin, unfortunately, she has stage four cancer and um, she's in her early 60s. And uh, she went over to Whole Food Plant Based. My mom, I sent this to my mom. She sent it to my, my second cousin, my mom. And she watched it and she flipped immediately. And she was so sick from her chemo and all that. And she said, she just got done telling my mom, I haven't had this much energy. She said, I can't even sleep at night. And we're talking about somebody that's been through hell over the past few years um, and just hanging on. And so it's an incredible story how she went whole food plant-based. And now, I mean, it's just, it's incredible. She, it she feels better. She's doing stuff. She's cooking. She's sending us pictures. And she said, I have not felt like this, like ever. And we're talking about somebody that's very, very, very sick. Wow. So, so you need to put that yeah. on your channel. Yeah, interview your stuff. mom, interview yeah. her. I am. Well, I asked her, I said, will you do an interview with me? She said, I will absolutely do an interview with you because she's so excited because she's like I'm not, I don't want to take any more of this chemo I don't want to do this I don't want to do that and I mean this is somebody that literally literally stage four I mean very sick yeah. and she was at the point she had went so long she was at the point where she was in the bed most of the day and when she wasn't in bed the doctors had her drinking insure oh, so yeah. she get some kind of so the insure was making her vomit right yeah. And making her very sick and my mom was trying to help her and what can i do what can i do what can i do and um then she said look you got to eat this way that food is killing you and and forget about this chemo and yeah so she's 
up, hook in, send me pictures. Where do I get this? Where do I get that? Oh my gosh, I love this. I mean, that's just, that's where the rubber meets the road. How can you go? And I mean, you're talking about literally one foot gone. That is. So I was super excited about who's the next person because this is not drastic. I love when people tell me that that's drastic. Yeah. Is, is yeah, yeah why? You're like, why is it drastic? I'm still eating all that I want. Yeah, I'm, exactly. eating, I'm eating no, big. No. Real, I feel like I'm eating really indulgent. Yeah, you know? Exactly. I mean, like, me okay, too. So I, don't, I don't need, I can't have my pepperoni pizza or whatever, you know, they grease where you have to let yes. the drip off the oh, napkin. Yeah, yeah. Um, the napkin. Yeah, oh exactly. darn, I can't have that. <laughs> yes. I, mean, I can still have my pepperoni pizza. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. To me, drastic is scalpels and saws. Exactly. You know, and have a, you know, that that's drastic. Or being yeah. on your heart medication and stuff for the rest exactly. of your life. Yeah. You know, exactly. that's no way to, no way to live. Exactly. Or you're just struggling with your weight. You're living your whole life every day being the, to the scale, to the scale, to the scale, worrying and how you feel about yourself and that self-loathing. And then to go from that to eating all this delicious food and really not even thinking about it. And Jill, girl, your complexion. <laughs> wow. Right. I mean, it helps your complexion. Yeah. I used, to, I used to have a, a dark mark under under my eye here and I actually had this mark removed twice by a dermatologist. They um they used they burned it off. So we're gonna burn it off. It might come back, but we wouldn't burn it off. It's gone. Basically, it's not even visible. Yeah. It's not even visible. Wow. I mean, it's just, it's, it, it's this incredible. Stuff is incredible. Like, it's incredible. You can't make this up because you can see it. The blood work is saying it's not somebody saying you know go do this go do that it's so real yeah you can't lie with metrics you can't you can't the numbers are i mean the proof is in numbers it's incredible and for me there's no sacrifice i think it's you know you measure it on how you feel like what you were saying i'm like when i hit 40 and i was having all these issues i'm like wow if this is 40 i already feel this old <clears throat> oh my gosh and I'm, I'm thinking I have at least 40 years to go and I'm gonna feel like this and possibly worse mm -hmm. wow this this kind of sucks you know and it now I'm bad. like wow I feel like every year just keeps getting easier and you know like I feel better yeah. I'm better. Like, how and I don't even have to think about it I know no, that no. that's gonna happen no. I know so, we're gonna be you know we're gonna probably be what is it centurions <laughs> <laughs> I'm like we got a long way to go. But we we, we do. Uh, Bob and Fran, you yeah. know, and they're they're turning eighty one, both of them this year, and it was so amazing to to connect with people who are eighty one mm -hmm. who are doing this. Right. And they started in their fifties and you know sixties, yeah. so they wow. had lived longer than we've even been alive. Yep. Eating, wow. you know, poorly, and he had cancer. I mean, they went through real serious stuff, and here I they know. are eighty, and they're hiking and doing tai chi yeah, and, like, you know the endless energy is like radiant people such kind people yeah and it got us like, thinking that's like that's it. what 80 looks like that's it honestly and you get all that time back one thing that bob and fran said when you guys interviewed them and it stuck with me when they said we outlived four of our doctors yeah exactly <laughs> that statement i mean i tell everybody that <laughs> you know, I watched these 80 year old and they were so lovely. Oh my God. They yeah, were so, so lovely. So I mean, yeah, they are so I smart. love them. Yeah. They give me energy. Like they, I'm like, Angel, stop me in a bus. Look at them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're unbelievable. And it's just easy because for me, I don't work out like Terry. I don't have that kind of energy. Um, he loves it. That's his coffee in the morning. But for me, I just walk a couple times a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. I don't have to hurt myself anymore. I don't, none of that. I mean, I was running outside, wrecking my knees and my back and my hips. You don't have to do that. Exactly. And I don't have to worry about, you know, or having so many pains and aches at such a young age. Yeah. 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 So. I, I love to exercise too, but I, I don't like not feeling well. I don't right. feel well. 
when I don't exercise. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I, I want to be able to do all the stuff that I want to do and it feel better, not worse. You know, I don't want exactly. to I'm like, oh God, I did too much yesterday. Oh. <laughs> I'm I'm with you and, and you do. And that's I mean, that's what I said to Terry. I mean, I tell Terry all the time, this is our love story. Yeah. This is what we're gonna call our love story. I just I want to write a book about it because I'm so excited to call yes. our love story because it really has been a love story for 20 years about wait, you have high blood pressure. I know we can do something with that. Wait, now you have high cholesterol. I know we can do oh my gosh, now your blood sugar is going up and you're not even eating sugar. I mean, his whole body just started to shut down on him. And I felt like he was in front of me in quicksand and I'm trying to help him. And he was just thinking it was a horrible, horrible, but it's like our love story. And I told him the only thing we're racing in life is time and you can't get the time back. And when it's done, it's done. This is inevitable. And now I, honest to God, I know we're getting at least 20 years more together. I mean, good for me, not so good for Terry. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> great for me. Great for me. So, I get to eat another 20 years. So that's right. Too, so. <laughs> okay, so we, got, we have two questions left. One is just if there's anything that you'd like to say to our audience that you haven't already said, you're welcome. Is it just any thoughts? You have these? Just, just the, the whole food plant base lifestyle has been so transformational, not only for Angel and I, but for family, um, for friends, in that, you know, it's just, it's, it's just incredible what you can, can learn and what you can do with the whole food plant-based diet. And just believe in it, stick with it, stay with it, and embrace it, and it'll, it'll be transformational for you as well. Yeah, I, I agree. And there's such a community out here if you get discouraged, I mean, watch you guys. There, there's so many people that are encouraging the, the documentaries that we talked about. I think if you feel like you get in a slump or something, watch a documentary. If somebody says, have a, have a cheat day, I feel like I cheat every day, but <laughs> yeah, I would never <laughs> cheat myself or cheat my husband. And, and so I would watch those documentaries. A lot of the doctors that you spoke about today, Jeffrey, I mean, they're wonderful. Dr. Esselstyn is another doctor that, that we really enjoy. I've read all those books that you've read as well. And it's, it's fun. I would just say, try it because it's fun. Give yourself, say, okay, I'm going to get, I listened to them. I'm going to do it for 28 days. Because after 28 days, you're going to want to do it for 28 years. That's all you have to do. I, I think within the first seven days, you feel that way, don't you? Yep. Challenge yourself exactly. to just say, I'm going to do this. Set a, something on the calendar so that you say, this is the next time I'm going to eat a cheesesteak. And go for it. And I promise you, you won't want that cheesesteak. I, I guarantee it. Plus, you can make a whole food plant-based cheese. Exactly. <laughs> By then, you'll know how to you'll make them. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I would do. Get a little bit educated. And if you don't like to read, watch the documentaries. They're wonderful. Absolutely. They're wonderful. That's great. Absolutely. That's great advice. I love that. Okay, so our last question is just your opportunity. Um, your website, YouTube channel, a cookbook. Just tell our audience which, where we can find you, what you guys are up to. Sure. So you can find us. Um, we do have a YouTube channel and it's uh, plant-based love, Terry and Angel. So if you YouTube plant-based love, Terry and Angel, that's where you can find us. We also have a Facebook, Terry and Angel Greer. So just our first name, Angel, Terry, Angel Greer. That's where our, that's our Facebook. Um, Angel does Instagram and Twitter. I'll let you kind of talk yeah, to those. So I think they're, they're all under Terry Angel Greer, the Instagram, because it's hooked to the Facebook and the Twitter. Mm -hmm. But really on YouTube, what we're sharing mm -hmm is recipes mm -hmm. and how you can buy simple ingredients at one store and cook all week. And that it's really not expensive and it's, and it's wonderful. Absolutely. So that's what we're, we're, we're just doing it out of love, out of passion and um, really wanting to share our recipes. And, and like you, Jill, we're wanting to create things that we didn't think we could have and now we can. And our whole world is just so much bigger than it was before. Big time. And Angel is coming out with a cookbook. Yeah. Uh, this oh, fall. Pressure. We're working on it now. The pressure. So, um, <laughs> I hate you guys. I'm excited. I'm excited about it. So she's coming out with a cookbook and um, original recipes. Um, 
and ten. At least a hundred, Ellie, right? I think well, I, I, Jill, I had to remake them like ten times because I don't write anything down. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a yeah. process. It's yeah. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully in the fall, and fingers crossed. Terry has told the whole world, so no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. And eventually, I don't know when, but I really do want to write a love story book about our story and um, for sure, yeah, share it with people because it's really important. Absolutely, absolutely. So if you go to our channel, we also have a um, a, a grocery haul series. Oh, so nice. uh, that's we're called Whole Food Plant Based. Yeah, exactly, we're exactly. Having fun so with it. we're having fun with it. So uh, hopefully, you know, everyone can go to our channel and uh, take a look and give us comments and some feedback. Hopefully, you guys will too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll okay. put everything on the screen. Yeah. And we'll yeah, so we and, and we'll give links and, and, and details from the description. The, or the description. Yeah. Of all your, all of your different social media stuff. So yeah. thank you everybody so knows much. Find you. Yeah, thank you. We figured so the more glad. support we can get, the more support we can get, the more we can spread the word. And it's so great when people give you ideas about what they want, right? Yes. Do ideas. Tell us what you want. We'll do anything. Absolutely. You know, cooking. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I get those. I have an idea wall in our in our membership community. I let them, I, I keep my idea wall, and then they get to vote on which one they would like to see next. So, so that really helps me clue mm -hmm. into what are you looking for. Right. I know it sounds good to me, but I don't know what sounds good for you. Right. So, yeah, it, it really helps to just ask. That that's yeah. awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to the pepperoni recipe. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, now, now we got to put it out. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. Oh my gosh, we are so honored to be here. Thank you so yeah, much for letting so us much. share. Oh, well, thank you so for sharing. Glad. Hopefully, you know, hopefully we can, um, you know, continue to be a part of the uh, whole food plant based friendship world with you guys and share our recipes okay. and and uh, share back and forth. So uh, we're excited about that. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this interview. Just. Keep it or slow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. You can cut that <laughs> out. <laughs> I don't even know what to say after that. <laughs>